Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the Waves Abbey Road TG Mastering Chain plugin to get some of that Abbey Road sound in the box when I'm mastering. The thing about digital processing is that it gives you absolute control in theory over almost anything about the sound, whereas with analog gear like the TG, the designers were limited by the components that they had available and the design specifications they were aiming for in terms of noise and distortion and other factors. So what that meant was that often they made great musical sounding choices, which can still be valuable today, and that's why it's interesting to uh, play around with things like this. The original TG12345 console was first introduced when the Beatles recorded Abbey Road and was also used on albums like Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. So in this video I'm going to show you how I use the plugin, how I have it set up, why I use it in particular ways, because I think the why is more important than the what, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. So let's get started. And the song I'm going to be using is called Fragile by Joel Woods, and it was produced and mixed by his brother Josh. And I'm going to be working in Wavelab, which is my favourite mastering DAW, but the techniques and strategies I'm going to show you in this video can be used in any modern DAW. And I'm going to start off by showing you the overall structure of the plugins I have in this mastering chain. And I'm actually going to start at the end. So the first thing that I have is a VU meter. This is the Waves VU meter. Now the TG Mastering Chain plugin also actually comes with a meter bridge plugin, but as you can see, there's quite a lot of space taken up here by the peak display, which we've already got in WaveLab. So I'm going to use the Waves VU meter specifically. The VU meter is my favourite way still of measuring loudness, of judging loudness when I'm mastering. And I'm going to show you how. I use that in a minute. Uh, first thing to notice is this is on its default settings with 18 dBs of headroom, and I'll come back to that and why it's important in a minute. So we'll remove the meter bridge plugin. And the next step back in the chain, both of these plugins are in the master section of WaveLab, is the WLM Plus, the Waves Loudness Meter Plus. And the reason I've chosen the Plus version is that it has a true peak limiter. Um, and if I just expand this so I can show you the settings, I have a maximum true peak setting here of minus one, which is what I use for everything I do these days. It meets the recommendations of the streaming services and it makes sure I get great results when this file is played back anywhere. Now this limiter is not really going to be doing any serious work in this mastering session. As you'll see, it's just catching those momentary intersample peaks. So let's get into the meat of the processing. It's very simple. The nice thing about WaveLab is I can put the plugins directly onto the clip, and you can see I have three. I have the TG Mastering plugin, I have the J37 Tape Saturation plugin, and then I just have a gain change, which uh, I'm using one of WaveLab's built-in plugins for, because it's just a simple gain boost. Carrying on going in reverse order, let's talk about the J37 next. It's basically in the chain to stop that WLM limiter having to do too much work because I'm going for an authentic sound. And it's just reining in some of the peak levels gently. So I've chosen the 815 tape setting, 15 IPS, nominal bias. Everything else is at zero. I have no wow, no flutter, no noise, and zero saturation setting. And of course, all of those are things that you might like to play with yourself if you're going to use this plugin. But for me, I'm just looking for a completely clean result. I wouldn't tend to add things like wow, flutter, or even extra noise in a mastering situation without talking to the client about it directly. And of course, the plugin that's going to be handling the bulk of the processing in this situation is the TG Mastering Chain plugin. This is a plugin emulation of hardware that is still used today in Abbey Road Studios. This is the default setting here, so I'll just briefly explain what the sections are. Over here you have the input section, which I'm not going to use at all. You could use it to get a little bit of gain if you wanted. You could potentially use it if you wanted to adjust the left-right balance of your master. It also has this tape equaliser setting. Waves have only left that in for flavour, and for me personally that's not something that I'm interested in using, certainly not on this master. The next thing I'm going to do is drag this section here across to the left. A nice feature of this plugin is that you can completely configure the 
signal flow by reordering the components. This is basically a filtering section. You have a high cut, a low cut, and a presence cut or boost. Again, I'm not going to be using that for this master. I don't think I've ever used a high cut filter in mastering. I do sometimes use a low cut in order to take out some of the deep sub energy that might be making a compressor work too hard. And when I do that, my preference is to have that happen before the dynamics processing, before the compression and limiting. Next, we have the EQ section, which I will be using, and we'll come back to that. And then we have the dynamics processing. And this is one of the most interesting parts of this plugin for me. The EQ sounds great. It's got some great uh, choices, as we'll see. It's very clean, which some people may be surprised by, because one of the, the attractions of modeling a piece of analog gear like this is often to get some of that the distortions and the interesting flavors that the gear offers. But for me, it's the dynamics section that is the heart of this plugin. And there are a couple of important things that I need to tell you about it. The first is you'll notice it has no threshold. We have a makeup gain here, which you're probably used to. We have a ratio, you have a recovery time, which roughly speaking determines the attack and release times of the compressor and the limiter but there's no threshold setting. And that means that the level going into the processing is critical. Just like a piece of analog gear, if you push this too hard, it will change the sound. Now that could be a creative effect that you're interested in, or maybe it's something you want to avoid, but either way, it's something you need to know about. So let's just play a little bit of the song so that you can hear how it sounds, get a flavor of it. Of course, if I was mastering it uh, from scratch, I'd listen to the whole song all the way through, but uh, you can get a, a flavor of it just from this short section here. And we'll also keep an eye on the loudness using the VU meter up here. Holding on to broken frames Memories from the other side I was happy now my dreams have all been denied and I wonder why I thought this love wasn't so fragile Yeah, yeah And you had me going for quite a while now A while now I thought we were perfect till I saw the cracks That you didn't love me when Now you might have noticed that the VU meter was actually reading a few dBs hotter than the meters here on the J37. That's because I have a reduction at the input of minus 4 dB on the J37 because the recommendation is that the levels should peak at around zero. They're getting, kind of getting up to plus one occasionally. So that's a level that's optimized for the J37 specifically, and I have a compensating plus four at the output. One of the things I like about this plugin is the fact that if I pull this input level down, you can see I've got the level link there so that the output gain increases accordingly so that you're never fooled by the loudness deception, which is something I'm going to talk about in more detail in a minute. Remember that this VU meter is currently calibrated with 18 dB of headroom, which is the default. And you may have come across this before. It's, it's a good guideline for the type of level you might like to use with real gear and with plug-in emulations. So that's the level that is going to go into the TG mastering chain. And you can actually see that I have tweaked the clip gain here to add 3 dBs. When the file was first imported, it was at a lower level. So I have deliberately optimized that it's going pretty hot into the TG mastering chain, but we're certainly nowhere near mastering levels yet. And in fact, I don't recommend you try and achieve mastering levels using the TG at all. It's not designed with that in mind. And the manual says so. Even on its most aggressive settings, the limiter isn't fast enough to catch all of the peaks and transients that come through to achieve modern mastering levels. And you don't need it to. That's why we have the J37 and later on the WLM plus limiter in the chain. So having optimized the level going into the TG, that's why I use a further gain stage afterwards. Now we could use the makeup gain here, but I prefer to be able to bypass plugins with the smallest possible change in gain. As we're going to see, that's something that's a little bit tricky when using an emulation of analog gear like this. So I prefer to keep gain changes as a separate process. 
So what is mastering level? My recommendation for this is that you recalibrate the VU meter with 11 dBs of headroom. Then optimize the track so that the needles average around zero, pushing up to maybe one, two or three at most in the loudest sections. That's not super loud by modern standards, but for my money, it's right in the loudness sweet spot. Remember, the goal of this video is to achieve the Abbey Road sound. And whilst you will get super loud masters out of Abbey Road these days, I don't think that's going to get the most out of an emulation like the TG Mastering Chain. And if that is your goal in mastering, you can certainly achieve that by applying more gain and more digital limiting later on. So now I'm going to switch over to the settings that I've settled on for mastering this song and just take you through them and explain them to you. I think the first thing to talk about is the three different options you have available in the dynamics processing section of the TG. I've chosen to use the original setting, which is an emulation of the classic sound of the TG mastering console. You can also use the limiting setting, but personally I find that too aggressive. Could be a great creative effect used in the mix, but it's a step too far in a mastering context in my opinion. The default setting is this modern option, which waves have added specifically to enable you to get a more current compression sound for working on modern masters. And it might certainly be an interesting place to start, but personally, the reason I'm using this plugin is to get some of that flavor of the original sound. And if that means a little bit of extra pumping and ducking of the sound beyond what I might normally apply, well, so be it. So I've chosen to go with the original setting and I've adjusted the recovery time to two. On a lot of the presets for the TG, you'll find the modern setting has been used with a recovery time of three. And after a bit of experimentation, I found that original settings on two gives you attack and release times that are pretty similar to that setting, but with even more of the original flavor. So I'm just going to play you a section so you can hear how that sounds. And then I'm going to talk more about what I would say is the best way to work with this yourself to try and figure out the settings that you want to use and some possible pitfalls to be aware of. Ocean. While they play on repeat I thought this love wasn't so fragile Yeah, yeah And you had me going for quite a while now A while now I thought we were perfect till I saw the cracks That you didn't love me when I had your back Oh, I thought this love wasn't so fragile The broken frames Memories from the other side I was happy now My dreams have all been denied And I wonder why So hopefully you can hear the difference there when I was flicking between the flat settings and the ones that I'd chosen. The whole thing is louder because of that increase in gain with the peaks being handled by a combination of the J37 and the WLM limiter. But the changes in the colour of the sound are being made with the TG plugin. I have a little bit of EQ in here. I have an extra dB at 11 kilohertz with the blunt setting on the EQ. Uh, basically, you have here a low shelf, a high shelf, and then a broad, medium, and sharp EQ boost. And I've chosen the, the broad or the blunt setting. I'm not using this EQ parameter here, but down here I have another boost of a dB down at 250 hertz, just to give some extra thickness and depth. Um, let me just play that to you and toggle the EQ boost on and off so you can hear the difference. This love wasn't so fragile. 
yeah, yeah. And you had me going for quite a while now, a while now. I thought we were perfect till I saw the cracks that you didn't love me when I had your back. Oh, I thought this love wasn't so fragile, so fragile. So that boost up at 11 is bringing out some of the air in the vocals very nicely um, and this one lower down is warming up the vocal sound and also bringing just filling out the, the the body of the sound a little bit in a way that i like of course it's not perfectly uh level matched but the overall comparison is so we get a fair comparison when we do that in the dynamic section as i already mentioned i have the original setting with a recovery uh, of two ratio of 50 percent I think the most interesting thing is to look at the amount of gain reduction. Typically there was a dB or two of gain reduction happening, pushing down to four or five dBs and then relaxing back up. If we had had the input level of this much higher, the compressor would have been applying more compression more of the time and overcooking, if you like, which is why we wanted to keep the input level under control. Now this compressor setting does have a very soft knee, that's the other interesting thing about it. It's not a sharp change from the original signal to the compressed signal. It happens very gradually and starts at quite a low level. So it's great for a general kind of thickening up of the sound, filling out the textures and gluing everything together. And the attack and release times are just long enough that you have a little bit of that kind of... I have no idea genuinely whether this was the type of compression used on Abbey Road, but that kind of that warm, full, soft uh, drum sound that you hear right at the start of Come Together, for example, it's nice to think that there's an element of that in the, the mastered sound here. And then finally, I've got a setting here of plus one on the spreading tool. This is basically a mid-side processing tool. You want to be careful not to go too far with it. It's the kind of thing that's easy to overdo and gives you that strange kind of inside-out feeling on your mixes. But in this case, I think it added a really nice something to the song. Um, now I want to just demonstrate to you, I mentioned you need to be careful with this plugin. I'm just going to show you what happens when I switch without changing any of the other parameters between the different settings on the compressor here and explain why that's something you need to be careful about. Um, so let's just change between original and modern. You were perfect till I saw the cracks That you didn't love me when I had your back Oh, I thought this love wasn't so fragile So fragile I think you can immediately hear there there was a big change in gain. Even though all the other settings are the same, the modern setting gave us a much louder result. Now, that might be something that you like and something you decide that you want, but the risk is that you think you like it just because it sounds louder, not because you actually prefer the effect it's having on the sounds. This is the loudness deception that I mentioned earlier. And to avoid that, you need to be very careful. The method that I suggest is to use, let's say we want to compare this section of the song because the compressor will do different things at different points so different level matches will be needed. I'm going to use the WLM here. I'm going to reset the loudness readings and I'm just going to measure the long-term loudness of this section of the song. I thought we were perfect till I saw the cracks that you didn't love me when I had your back oh, So the integrated loudness, the long-term loudness of that section is minus 12. But if I switch across to the modern setting on the dynamics processing and then measure that section again. I thought we were perfect till I saw the cracks That you didn't love me when I had your back Oh, I thought this love wasn't so fragile So fragile you can see that the new reading is minus 9.3. So the final gain when we switch from the original to the modern setting here is 2.7 dBs louder. Now the way to avoid being fooled by that is to duplicate the original setting using the B to A function here, another useful function of Waves plugins. Then we switch back to A. And here with the makeup gain, we've got a makeup gain there of 1.9. So 
1.9, 2.7, we need to change that to minus 0 0.8 for the modern setting of the compressor. So we now have two different versions we can compare using the original setting and using the modern setting, but with less gain to make sure the loudness is the same. And now we can do a fair comparison between those two to see how the sound changes. And keep an eye on the gain reduction meter of the TG while I'm doing this. I thought we were perfect till I saw the cracks That you didn't love me when I had your back Oh, I thought this love wasn't so fragile So fragile I think it's pretty obvious to see there was a lot more gain reduction happening with the modern setting. Sound overall was quite a bit more controlled. I could definitely hear the harder knee of the modern compressor setting very clearly and more aggressive gain reduction as a result. And to me, it just didn't sound quite as interesting. It's not to say that you would have to use the more creative approach uh, for mastering this song, but I think it's a great example of why you might like to. So by all means, experiment with these for yourself. Don't take my word for it about the limiter setting <clears throat> or indeed the modern setting. The actual settings that I've used here are not as important, I don't think, as the process. The important points that I hope I've explained to you are to make sure that the level going into an analog plug-in emulation like this at least starts off in the right ballpark for the way the gear was intended to be used. Of course, you could go into the settings of the J37 and crank up that input gain in order to get more of a tape saturation effect. There's a saturation control here that you could use instead. You might like to experiment with a little bit of wow and flutter and noise to see whether you like those effects. You could boost the input gain to the TG, either using the input section here or prior to that in the chain if you prefer, to see if you like the results when the dynamics is being pushed harder and use the built-in mix control here to get more of a parallel compression flavor to the sound so that you have a more extreme setting but you keep some of the original signal as part of the sound but whatever you do beware of gain changes use a loudness meter to measure the long-term loudness of a section of the song that you're interested in doing a comparison on with one setting and then with an alternative setting and adjust the makeup gain to make sure the overall loudness is the same so that you don't get fooled into thinking one of them is better simply because it's louder. And before you go, I want to give you something to help you dive a little bit deeper into home mastering. It's called the Home Mastering Guide. It's absolutely free and it walks you through the six steps of mastering because Choosing the right processing, as important as it is, is just one of six different steps in the mastering process. And to get your music to sound the best it can possibly be on YouTube, on Spotify or iTunes, you need to have walked through all six steps or phases of the mastering process that I outline in the guide so you can be sure it's going to sound great on any platform. It's a simple PDF. You can download it and reference it whenever you like, when you're ready to master and release your music, no matter what the genre. And you can get it for free at homemasteringguide.com. And if you haven't already tried the Waves TG Mastering plugin, I really recommend you give it a go and try the techniques that I've shown you in this video. You can download it at waves.com forward slash TGMC. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.